Yaesu's new System Fusion leads the way for future ham radio digital systems. It provides total integration and compatibility of both digital and conventional FM communications. While conventional FM has a number of excellent features that continue to provide substantial advantages over digital modulations, such as low battery consumption and greater distance capability, digital modulation provides a wide range of advantages by enabling the exchange of more complex information, resistance to radio interference, and better audio quality. System Fusion joins digital and conventional FM communication into a single system. With System Fusion, the user no longer needs to choose between digital or conventional FM. Users can also communicate freely between C4FM digital and conventional FM stations. It's really nice to be able to use my digital capability with the analog people as well. So being able to transmit into the repeater digital, convert it out to analog and transmit out analog is amazing. At the heart of System Fusion's flexibility lies Automatic Mode Select, AMS, which automatically switches the transmit mode to either digital or analog based on the mode detected by the receiver. AMS simplifies mode selection and allows both digital and conventional FM users to coexist on the same repeater. System Fusion has four communication modes. In the Voice Data, or VD mode, half of the 12.5 kHz bandwidth is used for digital voice, while the other half is used for data. This standard C4FM FDMA digital mode provides the ideal balance of error correction and sound quality with the digital clear voice technology developed for C4FM digital. Voice FR mode uses the full 12.5 kHz to transmit crystal clear digital audio. The increased amount of voice data permits high quality voice communication, providing superb sound quality for a rag chew with friends. Data FR mode uses the full 12.5 kHz bandwidth for high speed data. The radio uses data FR mode when transmitting snapshot pictures. And finally, the analog FM mode generally provides superior range while using less power, thanks to Yesu's advanced low power circuit designs. System Fusion's digital mode allows for some very useful features. Digital group mode notifies you when members registered to a group are within communication range and displays information such as the distance and bearing for other group members. Members of a group can also send text messages and images when they are within simplex range. And in digital VD mode, information such as position data is transmitted together with voice signals so the distance and direction to the other stations can be displayed in real time while communicating with them. Excited this week that I'm ordering the FD1DR handheld just like this one sitting behind me here. Uh, and I can't wait to get my hands on it and program it and get it ready to go. Yesu's innovative FT1DR dual band digital handheld amateur radio has all the functionality you need in an easy to use, easy to carry package. Two independent receivers provide wideband receive coverage and dual monitoring capabilities, including AM and FM broadcast stations. Automatic mode selection, AMS, make switching between three digital modes and traditional analog FM effortless. The optional hand mic includes a digital camera, allowing a snapshot to be taken which can be stored in the micro SD card or transmitted to another Yesu digital radio. The micro SD card stores memory channels and photos on a micro SD card up to a 32 gigabyte capacity. The micro SD card can also be used to clone compatible radios. The data port can be used for connecting the optional camera equipment microphone or for connecting the radio to a computer for firmware updates or data transfer. With all of these features and an IPX5 water protection rating, the Yesu FT-1DR is a rugged all-in-one tool for a new age. One of the things that excited me about the 400DR, I have a motorhome. And uh, I can set that thing up in my motorhome and I've got APRS built in, I've got the digital, the analog, I've got the whole thing covered for VHF and UHF. And uh, it's just 
total flexibility. The Yaesu FTM400DR is a mobile dual band radio with a three and a half inch color screen. Touchscreen navigation further simplifies operation of this feature rich radio. Just like its little brother, the FTM400DR is compatible with the optional camera mic and uses a micro SD card for storing photos and cloning of compatible radios. Photos received from group members are displayed on the full color screen and the backtrack function will allow you to navigate to the location where a photo was taken. Automatic mode selection, AMS, makes switching between three digital modes and traditional analog FM effortless. And thanks to the built-in GPS, the FTM400DR supports group monitoring, backtrack, APRS, and smart navigation. Hands-free operation is available by using the optional wireless Bluetooth unit and headset. The setup and implementation of the DR1 was really quite easy. I was able to do it without even looking at the manual. The Yaesu DR1 is the System Fusion dual mode digital analog repeater that covers the 2 meter and 70 centimeter amateur radio bands. A wave of repeater upgrades are now underway across the country and around the world, replacing decades old conventional analog repeaters with these new dual mode repeaters affording continued use of conventional analog FM equipment while offering a new set of digital functions. The large color touchscreen interface on the front panel is used to configure various settings such as transmit and receive frequencies, mode selection settings, and transmit power, which can be set to 10, 25, or 50 watts. The display can be switched off after configuring the settings to prevent accidental operation. The microphone jack and built-in speaker on the front panel make setup and adjustments easier and also allow for base station operations. The DR1 fits into the same 19-inch equipment rack and uses the same duplexers and amplifiers as your existing repeater. For 100% compatibility, some groups are enabling automatic mode select on the DR1's receiver and setting the transmit side to FM fix mode. In this configuration, the repeater will transmit conventional analog FM regardless of whether a user is transmitting in digital or analog mode. Other groups that are installing the DR1 on a new repeater pair and groups that have a high adoption rate are enabling automatic mode select on both transmit and receive, enabling digital users to take advantage of the full feature set yet still functioning as an analog repeater when an analog user is detected. I'm Corey Sickles, WA3UVV. I'm the Southern New Jersey Section Public Information Coordinator and a proud member of the Gloucester County Amateur Radio Club. My name is Jim Wright, call sign N2GXJ, and I'm a member of the Gloucester County Amateur Radio Club here in Southern New Jersey. We're about 18 miles outside of Philadelphia, about 250,000 people in the area here. John Zaruba, K2ZA, and uh, I'm the Section Emergency Coordinator for the ARRL Southern New Jersey section. Today we're going to be replacing our two meter repeater, which has been giving us service for many, many years, but is aging out somewhat with a brand new Yaesu System Fusion DR1 repeater. Many of the new members that are joining our club are at the technician class level or they're just getting a license in the near future. And their first introduction to amateur radio is uh, two meter, 70 centimeter. And one of the things that our club relies on to pull everybody together in a community is to be able to have a good working local repeater. We expect the process to be relatively simple. What we're basically going to do today is just shut down the existing repeater and harvest our set of duplexers to the new one. Nobody wants to relearn how to program in the PL tones and stuff for their current radios uh, and not have it work. So one of the neat things that we're doing here is is bringing over the exact same frequencies, the exact same PL tones. So we're really looking forward to this opportunity here to use the ACU equipment. I 
at the end of the day, the average amateur radio operator that's coming out responding to an emergency is coming out with equipment he's bought out of his own pocket. So if we have an opportunity to improve the infrastructure while not obsoleting everything that the ham is bringing to the table, it's just a, a pure win for amateur radio and emergency communications. I, those of us in the digital world, if there's something a little glitch, we're going to be understanding of that. The existing FM users are not. And what was very pleasant about the whole thing was in firing it up, getting it configured, and putting it on the air, uh, people were able to use it right away. The setup and implementation of the DR1 was really quite easy. If you know something of the stuff of a repeater, uh, I need an input frequency, I need an output frequency, what's my tone squelch frequency, uh, these sorts of things in there, it, it's very easy to do. With System Fusion, it's not obsoleting everything that they already have. But as their interests change and increase and they want to participate more in more facets of MCOM, uh, they can upgrade equipment and stay with the system and just add capability. We're not, uh, we're not forcing anybody to uh, junk everything they have and, uh, and go buy all new. Obsolescence is one of the things that many people get worried about. Oh, I bought that brand new computer. Oh, there's its replacement. Um, we have those concerns with radio. And one of the nice things about the System Fusion product line is that the firmware is upgradable. Right now, based on initial impressions, uh, I'm very excited about, uh, about the potential for our uh, emergency communications work. My name is Chris Wilson, N0CSW. My name is Michael Blake, N0NQW. John Roberts, KD0GKM, or Nogo, Missouri, just north of Joplin, Missouri. My name is John Collison, and I'm KB0OU here in Joplin, Missouri. The local group here is the 49 Repeater Group, and we share a link system between Joplin and Springfield, Missouri, and we serve the National Weather Service with uh, our local Skywarn group. We got the repeater and two days later it was online. Uh, we already had a UHF antenna up on our tower, so the initial configuration took about 30 minutes uh, and we had the repeater deployed. It wasn't very hard at all. Uh, a couple days later, we interfaced it to a repeater controller, and uh, you know, it was, it was a fairly straightforward process. What excites me about System Fusion is the high amount of flexibility that the system offers us as ham radio operators. It does analog, it does digital, it does data. So I believe that all the hams in the area will find a use for it. We've used just about every mode with the System Fusion uh, repeater that we, we can possibly use. We've used the voice modes, data modes, we've tried uh, GPS uh, data uh, tracking, we've done messaging, group messaging, and uh, also played around with some of the, the group mode features that the radio has to offer. You can set up uh, a group of two or three people that uh, you want to hear that data, and nobody else will hear that data. So that group function can be real handy in emergency situations. To be able to take a picture standing underneath a wall cloud when hailstones are coming down around you, <laughs> you know, and be able to send that back to the National Weather Service in Springfield is um, invaluable. On Digital Narrow, you can get good audio, plus you can get data. You can see how far away the person is that you're talking to, you know their call sign, you know exactly who you're talking to. I'm an old-fashioned analog guy. I hated digital from the time I first saw it, and then now I'm, now I'm becoming a fan. More and more every day when I see the advantages of digital um, communications, it just excites me, and I want to become more and more a part of it. 